Okay, today we're going to tell a trickster story. Now, who is this guy called Trickster? You know, just about every culture in the world depicts a character they call the trickster, whether it's mythology or the Native Americans. And today we're going to talk about a Native American story from the Winnebago tribe. And their trickster has some common characteristics that often uh, are, are common for the other tricksters around the world. But this particular guy is both creator and destroyer. He's both the giver and the negator. He is he who dupes and he who is duped. He behaves purely on impulse with no control. He knows neither good nor evil, but's responsible for both. He's got no values. He's got no morals. He's just the trickster. And these stories are helpful in a lot of ways. And one of the ways I've seen these stories be helpful is to tell them to adolescents because adolescents love these stories and they laugh and they enjoy them. And then you can ask them about the story and how it, how it may play out in their life. And you get a very fascinating conversation that comes from that. But let's tell the story first and you can see for yourself whether it'd be something you could tell. Because these are body stories. You know, if, if you're not ready for a story about poop and farts, uh, turn around now and uh, put hit the pause button and, and beat it. Because this one's gonna have a lot of both of those things in it. Anyway, once upon a time, Trickster was walking through the forest, as he usually did, aimlessly walking through the forest. And as he walks through the forest, he hears a voice, and the voice says, if you eat me, you will surely defecate. Trickster says, ha, huh, who is that? He looks around, no one's there, he keeps walking, he hears it again. If you chew me, you will surely defecate. Trickster says, no one tells me when and if I will defecate. He tries to move closer to what he thought was the voice. He moves closer and he hears it right next to him. If you chew me, you will defecate. He goes, huh, I don't think so. And he looks over and he sees a bush. And the, there's a little bulb on the bush that's doing the talking. It's the bulb that's saying, if you eat me, you will surely defecate. Trickster snatches that bulb, <clears throat> chews it, swallows it, and goes upon his merry way. Well, it wasn't too long as he was going along, he said to himself, ha, huh, that bulb said that I would surely defecate, and look, it's not doing anything to me, the trickster. Well, shortly thereafter, some gas started coming. Then he says, ah, this is nothing but a little gas, a small fart. But then a larger amount of gas came that smarted his butt. Oh, and he said, ah, it's still nothing. This thing said that I would defecate. It's completely untrue. Then all of a sudden, out of no place, a blast came from Trickster's butt that pushed him up in the air and flat down on his face, landing on his feet and his hands. And he said, ah. It's not that much, but this time he held on to something. Surely he held on to the side of a small tree, and as he did, his butt would go up in the air with the gas, up in the air with the gas, and then came up so much that the tree was uprooted completely. Trickster's thinking, uh-oh, this is not good. He went over, he found a large oak tree. He held on to the oak tree with all his might. Boom! This huge amount of gas comes. It blew his butt up in the air, and his toes and feet were above his head, tapping the tree as the gas was released. But the tree didn't move. So Trickster thought, this is a good idea. And he kept holding on to this tree. And sure enough, it kept blowing him up and up and up. And he said, forget this. He goes, runs through the forest, and he runs upon this group of people that are there, living there in their, in their um, DPs, whatever they are. And he goes through, he says, oh no, you must leave immediately. There's a war party ready to come upon us. They will kill you all. They'll kill you quickly. Take everything down. So they took down all of their, all of their, their homes and they piled them on top of Trickster. They put them on top of Trickster, the dogs on top of Trickster, everything on top of Trickster. And then some gas came that blew everything up in the air. Sin is all sprawling. The dogs were howling. The people were yelling. All of their teepees were just spread all over the place. What a terrible mess. 
Trickster laughed until his sides ached. He thought that was one of the funniest things he had ever seen. And then he walked on a little farther and he said, Surely this is not going to be a problem with me defecating. And then all of a sudden he felt a little bit coming. He said, This is nothing. It's just a little bit of poop. But then he felt more coming. And more and more and more. And he started wondering, uh oh, this might be a problem, until the poop started rising up so far that it touched his butt. So he had to get up and stand up on a log, and still the poop was rising up. He climbed up the log that was leaning up against a tree. Still, he's climbing up. The poop is literally piling up behind him. He's got to go higher and higher and higher. He goes up literally to the very top of the tree. It's slippery up there. It's not stable because the, the trunk is tiny now. The branch he's standing on starts being filled with poop until finally he tried to adjust slightly and boom, he fell straight into the huge pile of his own excrement. Completely immersed, he was just covered in poop and he fought his way out of that huge pile of poop. And he finally got out of that pile after a huge amount of effort and he could wipe down a little bit. He wiped the pack on his back, which carries his penis. And he wiped down the, the, the box, actually, that carries his penis. And he wiped down the raccoon blanket that he had. And he wiped his body as much as he could. But he could not get the poop out of his eyes. And he literally could not see. He couldn't see a thing. So all he could think of doing was run. He ran and ran and ran. Boom, he runs right into a tree. He says, he holds the tree, he says, Mr. Tree, Mr. Tree, who are you, please? He sings to the tree, he sings to the tree, and the tree sings back, who do you think I am? I'm the oak that stands in the middle of the valley, the forked oak. Trichter says, oh, good. He says, is there water nearby? I need some water. The tree says, straight ahead. So Trichter keeps running, straight ahead. Boom, he runs into another tree. Tree, oh tree, who are you, tree? The tree says, I'm the red oak that stood at the side of the valley. And don't you know who I am? She said, no, 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 but tell me, is there any water here? Straight ahead. Trickster runs and runs and runs. Boom, he runs into the slippery elm. And he's, he says, tree, tree, who are you? The tree says, I'm the slippery elm. Who do you think I am? I'm at water's edge. Trickster said, oh, good. Which way? He says, this way. Trickster ran right into the water. He cleaned himself up. He cleaned out his eyes first. And then he took the box out. He cleaned off his penis. He put the penis back in the box. He cleaned up everything. And then he was on his way again for another adventure. And that's the end of the story. Men are good. <laughs>